Welcome, 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 welcome to the drum show, the show that really likes to give insights into how marketing is changing the world and of course how the world is changing marketing. We have quite a special edition for you this week because we're in the middle of award season. In fact, over recent weeks, the drum has published the nominations for four different awards. We published nominations for the marketing awards, for the design awards, for the roses awards and the chip shop awards. But it's the last three I really want to focus on because they really uh, give insights into creativity. And I thought this week, uh, an amazing panel. Uh, we've got Lynn Lester, who is a managing director of Drum Event. Welcome. Ooh, thank you. And we've got Hitton Bat, who is the head of design at RAP. That's so great. welcome, Hitton. Thank you. And also, you are one of the judges on the Design Awards, and you've also judged lots of other events. You've judged judge summer events in Scotland, and you've also been a chip shop judge too. That's correct, yeah. Yes, and that's why you might be qu well qualified to really touch on the first issue I really want to look at, which is the Chip Shop Awards. Now, Lynn, the Chip Shop Awards has been going a, a few years. Earlier I spoke to Pancho Gonzalez, who is this year's chair of the Chip Shops. He's based in Chile. But before we get Pancho's insights, can you just sort of uh, tell us what the Chip Shops is and what it stands for? Yeah, okay, you're speaking my language now, Gordon. So yeah, this is my sweet spot. So for me, so, so the chip shop is basically a creative show that has no limitations. There's no boundaries. You don't even have to have the client. You don't even have to have a budget. You don't even have to have the medium. You can basically create and you can inspire depending on what you've seen and what you felt and how you, you want to sort of portray a brand. So we, we don't have any, as I say, there's no limits and there's a variety of categories, everything from outdoor to design to TV. And what it's really doing is it's sort of even in that sort of playing field. So, you know, we've had situations where you get the most sort of senior ECDs and then you get a student and the student's literally sweeping up or vice versa. And it's really, it's just such healthy competition. So when we put the entries to the, the judges, they don't really know if it's a student or if it's a qualified creative. So what's really nice about it is it's global. So it brings entries from all around the world, so it really allows people to compete. And I've seen people get jobs off the back of it, actually, and promotions too, and bonuses. So there you go. Yeah, it helps us identify uh, fresh talent and also not so fresh talent who's looking. No. Does it have to be honest? No. Does it have to be legal? Hell no. Uh, but does it have to be brilliant? Absolutely. So that's the only rule in the chip shop that has to be brilliant. Uh, and as I said, we caught up with uh, the year's uh, chair, Pancho Gonzalez, to really find out what his insights were. Here he is. Pancho, thanks for joining me today. What was your favourite category in the chip shop awards? The category that really, really uh, got my attention is best vandalism of an existing ad. So, and if you have the chance to take something that is already done, or it's already created that maybe even if, even if you got like a grand prix i can you can you can hack that that ad is i think it's an it's a chance that only only this kind of festival could could give you why is it important that creatives sometimes get the chance to be free work in an environment with no rules the originality the execution and their purpose and beyond that it's uh, also a remark to all the, the jurors that Remember, when you're judging an entry uh, or a festival, your name is on the lineup. So don't forget about it and don't be ashamed of where you're voting. So that's the, the main goal. I mean, obviously, the, the Chip Shop Awards is all about giving creatives more freedom than they would normally get because there are no rules. Why uh, work in a way where they're not restricted or constrained? Chip Shop is, is hard. It's weird because when you're... Totally, when you got the old, the, that freedom, the, you don't have constraints to create something. But at the same time, there are those guys who decided to enter real world like me. I think it's uh, sometimes when when, it's, when you're totally free, it's harder to come up with, with something really, really outstanding. It's a challenge when you, when there are no rules, it's a challenge to compete and do something that you, you, you think is really, really great. What sort of things were you looking for on the competition? Uh, and have you any, can you think of any of the submissions that demonstrate that without giving too much away? It's for a Durex condom. I don't know if you have seen that with the, with, with, with the kid, you know, dressing like a, a girl and, and screaming out loud. And also there's another entry for, for that a student did. They, they, they just created a prototype where 
to de detect cancer uh, in, in, uh, throughout a women period uh, across the tempac. So it's kind of a it's it's an it's an invention. It's a prototype. It's, I think creativity should go in that way of solving so social problems. Uh, and what what if we can I, we, what if you can detect you, a, ca a cancer and when you're a woman throughout that thing? I think it's a, it's a, it's a solid solution for life. Well, that was Pancho, and I have to say, I do think we're going to sort of be looking at that Durex ad later. I think it's basically using an annoying kid as an advert for, for Durex, but it's a really good campaign. But also the point he was making about, you know, that sometimes the idea is really important, and that shouldn't, obviously shouldn't, was a bit criticised. Uh, we don't know if that's affected results or not, but the idea was brilliant of using the sort of smart Tampax to effectively analyse blood to identify, give an early warning of cancer. Absolutely brilliant idea. Somebody should do that. Yeah, I mean, some of the best campaigns are just born out the idea, right? So, you know, to, to his point, the execution doesn't have to be on point in the first, because this is technically the first draft in a way for some people, because I've seen some chip shot work that goes on, goes on to make it. And actually, I've seen conversations with brands where they want to start pick up the idea further and take it on for real paid work. And obviously, Pancho was himself nominated in this campaign. I'm going to show you the work. You can decide if it's really badly executed or not, if it was a good idea. <laughs> but he's nominated. But the interesting thing about his work is actually a real campaign. Uh, and we are seeing that more in the chip shops. People are entering real work. But the interesting thing about this is a real campaign for a real client. But at its heart, it was about a spoof film. So it sort of, did sort of work, but I, I thought you might like to see a clip of it, see what you think. <laughs> These trailers were shown in movie theaters and online platforms that directed to the site asentamiento.techo.org, which was the only place where you could buy the tickets to watch the movie. Once people entered the and that for each seat, they campaign results, one month, 2,700,000 of trailer playback, 17,878 interactions throughout the community. 10,423,000 people reached in social media. Over $100,000 raised. Settlements, a film that did not exist thanks to your contribution. Uh, and I think it's fair to say that was probably quite well executed. Really nice it's idea. Good. But in case you didn't understand what he did there, he actually got real famous directors in about five South American countries to make each of these little trailers to give the impression that this was a real movie. It did sort of capture the ethos of the chip shop awards, didn't it? It was very good and it reminded me of my, my fridge at home, I have to say, it's a bit empty as well. Yeah. <laughs> but what would you say uh, is your favourite category in chip shop, Lynn? Oh, there's so many, it's such a difficult question. It's almost like, well, who's your favourite child? I think the charity category is always really good for me and there's been a lot of campaigns have ran that I think, you know, I think they could run and actually they've been, they had probably had the most impact on me. I mean, I talk about more chip shop work than maybe I do in all the other shows, to be honest, because some of the work has really struck a chord and I think you are going to touch on some later. But there's, you know, there's one in particular where I always remember it was a sort of set, scene set where it was Christmas time, the music was, was lovely and someone came to the door and the mum got up, answered the door and there was a man there and he had this horrible horns and sort of monster face and it was really suddenly very eerie and he came in and he was touching the children on the shoulder and, he, and it was like oh my god oh my god this is horrible and it was all about you know predators or people that you often know and their family and friends than strangers and that that's just always stuck with me it's horrified me and it was awful but it was so impactful so yeah i just think there's a lot of, of work being done around and there's another one with the cup and it's about children suffering in silence and the idea is when you hold the, the cup you're, you're gagging them, basically. 
And it, again, it was just so simple but beautifully yeah. done. Yeah. Hitton, what, 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 from your memories of the Chip Shop Awards, what do you think? Yeah, so I judged the Chip Shop Awards a few years back. And I think for me, there was a time where there was a lot of Trump, uh, President Trump uh, uh, entries. I felt like that, that, that just needs to be a category in its own. I think the, the ideas that came out of that were the, just brilliant and just so of the time. And I think, um, yeah, I think every year brings just more, ca you know, more categories like that, you know, to the forefront. So yeah, it's interesting. And there's a few this year, but I thought we could maybe have a quick run through some of the, you know, the nominees this year, which I quite like. I've got one which I think is a great idea. It's called Bag for Life. And Ogilvy Health had this idea they could take the Sainsbury's bag and turn it into a campaign for testicular or cancer awareness. So basically, your bag for life is effectively your scrotum, I believe. But really simple idea. But I think that I think you should do that. Probably work. <laughs> Um, Brewdog, and this was a campaign, a suggestion, Merkel suggested this for Brewdog, uh, and the idea was why didn't you create a, uh, you know, a Brewdog product for the U Ukraine, uh, and I think we can sort of see it's called, uh, well can we say fuck off? I think yeah, we can. I think you, you can. can say fuck <laughs> off. Your brand called Fuck Off, which is a ready-made Molotov cocktail. <laughs> and this one uh, I quite like, this is MC Sachi. I did this one for Burger King, and it was basically promoting their new app which means you never have to wait in line <laughs> again. <laughs> He's been 73 years waiting in line. Uh, so I think that's nominated under Best Use of a Celebrity. <laughs> Quite hard-hitting stuff as well, uh, as you always get into chip shops. And I think someone did one, a bit of a, one for Amnesty International, uh, for the Qatar. So getting Amnesty International, mm -hmm. I guarantee that's going to be our first cease and desist letter because they are very careful with their brand. So I, uh, sorry, sorry, Amnesty International. Uh, we'll, we'll change the logo if you want us to, uh, but I think it's a, a, a good point, well made. Yeah. But the other thing we are seeing is a lot of global stuff coming in, particularly from a, an agency called Fred and Farid from Los Angeles. And they've actually entered quite a, a few things to the point where I think they're competing themselves against, each, the, the, they're competing against themselves in some uh, categories. Uh, and one of them is best use of honesty, one of my favourite categories. They're competing for this campaign, this poster, which is meant to tackle bullying as an issue. Again, that's quite a serious campaign, and I think that might be a sort of spoof. I don't know if that really is running. But they've also entered one, uh, which I believe has run, which I find is incredible. And I'm just going to let the, the commercial do the talking. Hi, Han. Hi, Annie. Snowball. Nerd alert. Hello, Father. You know, Socrates said. Anyways, we'll uh, we'll talk later. <gasps> I didn't do it. Ladder. Life insurance so good, they're gonna want you dead. I love you too, guys. But seriously, intentionally killing a policyholder will void all life insurance benefits. That's uh, brilliant. That's a brilliant piece of work, isn't it? It's so well cast as well. I love the, yeah. that boy reminding my son, hello, father. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I don't have any life insurance. Oh, well, you may, think, maybe you should get some. Getting, I mean. <laughs> uh, but actually, in a similar vein, uh, uh, Pancho mentioned this one as well. I do want to show you because I think it's uh, brilliant. It was the, that ad for Durex. Uh, there used to be a category for best use of plagiarism in the chip shops. I don't think it's there anymore. But this would be an ideal fit for that as well. So it's a strong campaign where they've basically taken uh, an ad for, I think, uh, house insurance, John Lewis house insurance, mm -hmm. and, it, and it basically just used another logo. So do you want to see it? Do you want to see it? I would love to yeah. see it.
obviously <laughs> love that. Yes, yeah, it's so it's, good. It's brilliant. I do suspect another lawyer's letter. Uh, <laughs> sorry, John Lewis. Uh, I think that the John Lewis when they run that was controversial, but I think that's yeah. just a brilliant, brilliant execution. Isn't it? A brilliant way of reinterpreting. That's from the Bank of Creativity, incidentally. Yeah, it was so good. I think that's the beauty of chip shop, isn't it? You just expect the unexpected. And that's case in point. Yeah, but before we move on away from the chip shops, Lynn, uh, obviously uh, the show is coming up. Here's a test for you. What date is the show? To coincide with the Can Action, Can Line, we're actually running the Can Do Festival, which is a week wide festival in Can in London and virtually through the Drum TV. So wherever you are in the world, you can access it and you're part of it. It's all about inclusivity. So as part of that, on the Thursday night of Cannes, which I can't remember the exact date, but the Thursday of that week, we're going to be doing the Chip Shop Awards and we're going to be running it here from London, but we're also going to be broadcasting parts live from Cannes. And of course, anyone can take part globally. So we will be doing a lot of PR on the back of this to, to get people G'd up and excited and promote the nominees. So yeah, yeah the third... What, 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 what day do we get? I can't remember the date we get. I is that the 20... You, you tell me. 23rd. 23rd. Is it 23rd? 23rd of June. Okay, You're a that's professional. Good. Well done. I am a professional. <laughs> See, it's just about delegation, Gordon. Yeah. 23rd of June, and it's going to be here in the Drum Labs. It's a big party here. You're going to be in Cannes presenting it. I'm going to be presenting it in London. So yeah. London is going to be the place you want to be, really. It's really not. But if you have to go to Cannes, you're stuck there. <laughs> Feel free to go and see Lynn's show, but it's going to be much better here. I have a pint on me. Come yeah. on. Okay, right. But actually, the thing about the Chip Shop Awards, uh, there is a lot of social good, and uh, and there's a link here. And a good example of show some, show some social good is this ad, which is for uh, suggested for the Alzheimer's Society, which is based on the, the tube map. The idea was to remove a lot of the details from the tube map to give you an insight into what it must be like to be confused. Uh, so I think it's a really, really nice idea. And again, I think somebody should do it. But I know this sort of social purpose setting is very close to your heart. And one of your big claims to fame is you actually introduced a category in the Design Awards back in 2019, which was Design for Good. And can you just tell us what, what was your uh, thinking behind that? When I was looking at the categories, I could see that there was a lot of social purpose, a lot of a lot of work that was resonating with me and I felt like that is designed for good and we, you know, as designers we, we don't want to just make things look pretty, we want it to have purpose and have an impact in this world. So that was the reason why I felt that it was important to create an award like that, especially with what's been going on the past few years and I think over the last few years there's been more and more work coming into that category, it's become one of the strongest categories so that's why you know, I feel very proud to have uh, put that in front of the you know the team and uh, it's yeah it's it's growing year on year I love yeah. it yeah yeah it's a brilliant cast I love it and I, I have to say also a big uh, shout out to Natasha Turner Wardner who is this year's chair but she's doing a fantastic job supporting these sort of initiatives yeah uh, definitely. and also I think she's really brought the design awards along such a long way you're totally <coughs> right so obviously John Mathers was brilliant uh, he, he, he invited yeah, me initially. Yeah. yeah, so I've been luckily, lucky to be involved in these awards for five years now. And Natasha took the mantle two years ago, year on year since Natasha took over, is that it's obviously gone global uh, and it's as diverse as it's ever been. Not diverse from just the judges' viewpoint, but diverse in terms of different types of designers, different types of the judges that come from different walks of life, different design disciplines. So we're getting different points of view on design and it's just really lovely to see design represented in so many different types of businesses. So, yeah, it makes me feel good. Yeah, and also you can see it making a difference. I mean, I think your category this year, it's some extra nominations in it. Yeah, two uh, spring to mind to me at the moment. One was, I think, Hubbub did a bit of work for Westminster City Council to try and deal with the issue of cigarette waste. Yeah. You know, people just throw the cigarette butts down they try to gamify the you know the disposal of cigarette butts by putting these units in London, where you basically got to vote for who's the world's best footballer by cigarette butts. I think we've got a, a picture of it. Westminster say that actually reduced cigarette waste by something like forty nine percent. So it's a really simple idea. It's brilliant, and I think that's how, I think that's how design is changing in, in a way, isn't it? It used to really be about the sort of the visualization. But there seems to be a lot more about actually solving real problems. I think, yeah, design's always been about problem solving. And that's what I've been trying to do myself in my career, is just 
pushing that forwards higher up the food chain in terms of like it's not just about making something look nice, it's about an actual raw idea and how it can impact, impact society. So that's a great example of how design can be used to change behaviour uh, and for, you know, get people involved in, a, in purpose, you know, yeah. which is great. Another thing, uh, campaign again in your category, I think is one of the standout ones, was for the Nubian Jack Community Trust by Havas. And this was really trying to deal with the issue that uh, black people are underrepresented when it comes to blue plaques. Yeah. So what they did was they invented a campaign where they started to install uh, uh, black plaques to recognise notable black figures from history, which is a brilliant idea. And I think we've got a, a bit of a video to explain yeah. that. One would hope there would be a reasonable balance, but unfortunately that isn't the case. There's probably around 1% of blue plaques in this city go towards people of African-Caribbean descent. That these people have not been included in the celebrations of brilliance and aptitude and excellence that their white peers and contemporaries have is a crying shame. There's so many things that I did not know so many things that I was not taught, so many things that I was not told. And when you realise those things, it empowers you. We are able to proliferate the stories that would otherwise have been buried alongside their owners, then we'll be making a massive difference to our understanding of this country moving forward. You can't duplicate what happened then, now, but you can make it better. If we continue on the trajectory that we are on now and this country holds itself accountable and does not shirk or fear the conversations that need to be had, then I have no doubt that more and more stories will come to light and be celebrated. But again, it's another brilliant idea. But generally across the board, what sort of uh, trends are you seeing in the, des in, in the design awards? I mean, I think sustainability is a big thing. Uh, always will be and it's important that sustainability is up there. Uh, I would like to have seen more of it uh, in terms of uh, in the packaging categories, but I think across all categories, sustainability is a big theme. People are addressing it head on. It's great to see that. I mean, we're talking about design for good, right? So it's it's a real problem out there. It's a real issue, and uh, designers are tackling that head on. It's brilliant. And I've always been quite passionate about the design awards because I, you know, I always felt that the the role design plays in the marketing mix generally has always been really underestimated. We seem to go through a bit of a golden era in the 90s where it, you know, it seemed to be on a trajectory of becoming one of the lead disciplines. Yeah, yeah. But when yeah, digital right. came in, I think people loved the new sh shiny tech stuff and then forgot the value of good design, but I think it's an ascendancy again. What do you I think? I think so, yeah. So in the 90s, um, when I graduated a long time ago, we had your superstar designers out there like David Carson, and people like that, you know, your design, you know, superstar design companies. And then, as you say, the dot-com thing happened and digital typography and the sense of craft was lost because design was sped up. But I feel that re in recent years, the, the value of craft is coming back. And I do think that, you know, it's all about experience and how people interact with the brand. And I think craft is a big part of that. So craft in printed media, in digital, it's all, it's all blending in with each other. And I think it's, it's great to see that coming back. Yeah. No, Lynn. I know we don't do this. We don't do this. We you, well, shall we put the shall we put the date into the show? It's it's, it's next Thursday. Thursday, yes. Oh no, well that's actually a week today. Yeah, a week today, yeah. exactly. Week today, where? In the Drum Labs in London, but broadcast globally to everyone anywhere in the world. And can you remember who's presenting it? Well, I am the credible presenter on that. Oh no, I think you might be. Um, standing. Yeah, I might be okay, as well. Yeah, it, so. okay, yeah I'll be keeping. I'll maybe make sure you don't forget anything important. Don't worry, I'll keep you on your toes, Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> See, before you move on from that, there was another piece of work I really loved as well, was the um, the tough turban. I love that, I absolutely love that. Wasn't that just a stellar piece of work? And it was where the, I mean, Zila Alpha Kilo have, have got a lot of sort of credit through what we're doing. They're, they're based in Canada, but they basically created the, the turbans where the Sikh community could wear them and they could, they could sort of stick to the religion, but they could also be safe on the roads. And I just think it was really respectful yeah. piece of work. So the reason why I love that, because it took me back to an Only Fools and Horses episode years and years ago, where uh, I think Del Boy created a helmet mm -hmm. and, he, and he put, uh, uh, but it was a turban. And it was sort of like, at the time, it was, uh, it was a little bit controversial. Uh, and it was sort of, it was funny at the time, you know, I, I, me being an Asian person, I thought it was really funny. But I felt like this is a really serious uh, thing, you know, like, you know, people want to be, Sikh people 
want to ride bikes as well. And Harley Davidson got involved and created this beautiful product that was kept seek safe while riding their motorbike. Mm -hmm. And what I love about it is that it's an open source technology that they gave out to other manufacturers. And I felt that that was truly designed for good because it wasn't about Harley Davidson holding on to it. It was about giving that to everyone, and, yeah, I, yeah. and I love that. Yeah, it's brilliant. Of course, that, that campaign is nominated in the Design Awards as well. I'm hoping they might make a tough flat cap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was hoping so I could get the baseball bat and test it out, but <laughs> I don't know if that's loud. <laughs> but actually, we've got one more event to talk about, but before we go on to talk about the roses, uh, obviously we've been talking a lot about ourselves. I thought it might be quite good to just sort of see what other news is out there. So earlier I asked Hannah, one of our amazing reporters, to give us three top stories in three minutes and let's find out if she succeeded. Hi there, I'm Hannah Bowler, I'm a reporter at The Drum and I've been tasked to fill you in with three top stories in just three minutes, so watch how I do this. So firstly, um, we've been looking at Disney Plus and the fact that it's going to be rolling out ads later on this year onto its streamer, but it kind of made some announcements this week, a bit of a tease you'll say, about the fact that it will be having a super light ad load and it will also not be accepting kind of any advertisement from any political brands or any alcohol or anything that's been too adult too much adult issues, I guess. Um, well, it's not uh, unsurprising that Disney will make a kind of family-friendly ad offering. The ad light option will kind of indicate where other streamers are going to likely to kind of place ad loads. It will definitely be, will be McDonald's pulling out of Russia. And now it said it was permanently going to leave, which is the first brand that's really made this decision. It's going to sell up shop, and it kind of indicates of where brands might want to go because to be honest after the war in Russia which other side kind of comes out it's going to be uncomfortable for any brand to still be there or it will kind of have financial risks attached so McDonald's is the first brand but it's probably not going to be the last now the last story of this week which we cannot ignore in the UK especially is the Wagatha Christie scandal now it's in trial at the moment and while every little bit of juicy information has been pulled and pushed over in all the press. We've been looking at it from a kind of brand perspective and how the fact that, again, time after time, brands kind of like to weigh in on a lot of this social stuff that is kind of a bit of trolling, I guess. And Butterkiss had a brilliant campaign this week that really trolled the Wag for Christie scandal, um, inserting itself into the courtroom drama. Wonder if any more brands will follow. There you go, that's my top three stories this week. Did I do it in time? Well, I think you did a good job there, Hannah. I think it was about 1 minute 50. And obviously, it seemed like 30 <laughs> seconds is so interesting. But it's interesting, the Agatha uh, uh, Christie trial, isn't it? I mean, the Americans won't know what we're talking about, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. <laughs> that would have made a fantastic category in the Chip Chop Awards, would it not? Should we do that next year? Yeah. Definitely, definitely. I kind of thought that too. You know, I think and this is where, where brands can really get the, you know, good on Butterkiss for, do, for doing that. And sort of, I'm sure, sure they will not be the last, but it reminds me, in the online media wars, I don't know if you've seen it, it was Joe Media, I remember they did the spoof dance of the party gate. Yeah. So, you know, it's just every opportunity for a brand to sort of get involved, yeah. whether it be good or, or take the mic. Yeah, I love these really topical based ideas <laughs> and think brands should do more of it. But anyway, the last event we've got to talk about, we're just out of time, so we need to go quickly, is obviously the Roses, which celebrates all the best work outside the M25, does it not? It does, it's one of my favourite events actually. Yeah, and obviously the drum is uh, our heritage, I think, is outside London. So the Roses is, is not only one of our favourite events, it's one of the, the events we've really been working on for the longest. I'm not going to admit how long that is, but it's years. And one of the key things I think is interesting with the Roses, I, when I think you look at the nominations, there is a sort of discernible uh, sense that the regional creative accents do exist. So the work produced in Scotland yeah. is different to what goes on in Manchester and the North West and the South West. I think it's really interesting. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you look at even things like the Iron Brew ads, I don't believe that a London agency could pull that off in the same way because it's just very, it's very local, isn't it? You know, but, but also I think, you know, the, the way the world is changing, this whole working from home, you know, they're probably, people are probably getting a cheap deal up north. So you guys should probably put up your prices. But, you know, they're getting a really good deal, whereas it doesn't matter where you are. It's a talent now, so you could be anywhere in the world. So I actually think, you know, the regions have got a lot to sort of play for right now. Yeah, yeah, there's a life outside London. There is. I thought we were quite good to just quickly share 
Uh, again, I've just looked at the nominations. I've not been involved in the judging. I don't know what's won. Share two two campaigns which I, I quite liked. To your point, uh, Lynn, the you know Iron Brew stuff to me sums up the you know that humour in Scottish advertising, uh, and I particularly like this this commercial. Here she comes. You look prettier than a can of Iron Brew. Mm, I love its cream soda taste. It's not cream soda. No. It's lemony. Lemony? It tastes like ginger. Get your dancing shoes, doll face. Now, I think it's fair to say a lot, of not, a lot of people outside that target audience <laughs> might not get that. <laughs> No, they might not. Although I have to say, I'm going to say something a wee bit controversial, actually. I think because of the way society's moved, I, I think I prefer some of the older stuff from Iron Brew, I have to say, because I think it was more cutting edge and sort of to the bone. I remember driving along and you would literally, like, almost crash your car because you'd be staring at the billboards. The, they were so engaging. And actually, it's the only brand that I know kids that check out online. Like oh, through all their ads. I wasn't the weather nicer <laughs> back then too. <laughs> I'm just reminiscing. Kids didn't use computers. <laughs> Remember, we have a show to do next week. <laughs> uh, anyway, the other thing, actually, from a different part of the country, but I thought it was uh, brilliant. Uh, I think we've probably seen it before. Again, I cannot say if this has won or not, but I couldn't help but notice it's the only nomination <laughs> in its particular category. Oh so it's probably in with a reasonable <laughs> chance, uh, but I love this work for Greg, so we'll have a look. Yes. It's brilliant, isn't it? I wonder if the fashion have elasticated waistbands in that work. There's your new invention. <laughs> yeah. But again, it's a great brand, isn't it, uh, Greg's? Uh, because on one hand, you think actually yeah. they're in a sector which could be seen as uh, a bit passe, but they've just managed to renew themselves with their, you know, their vegan sausage rolls. And, yeah. and, I, and I think it's a great example how humour can play such an important role in how you develop a brand. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's brilliant, and it's just it's the sort of cheeky nature of what they do. It's brilliant. That's all I'm telling you this time because you might make fun of me, Gordon. And the roses, Lynn? <laughs> no, don't what do is this. the date of the roses? <laughs> it's the seventh of June, the t a Tuesday, the seventh of June, and we're doing it in person. The reason I know is because I'm coming back from holiday, so yeah. You won't see me for a week. Or yeah, it's you? exciting. We're actually going to go up to Manchester to do it. There's going to be a live yeah. streaming element, but we're going to be there in person. And what's different is we're going to make a documentary about all of the winning work. And we're going to really dig into this issue of looking at the regional variation between the creative output. So we're going to be looking at, you know, what Glasgow's doing, what Edinburgh's doing, what Manchester's doing. So that documentary will come out just about, just after Roses. So you can look out for that. You can. You can also stream live as well on the drum.com so if you if you can't go which hopefully people in the region we hope will be there because they know how to party and they know how to celebrate but for anyone around the world anyone can tune in that's great anyway we're going to have to go because everyone's busy uh, <laughs> you've got you've, one thing you've got can to plan i do because um, uh, obviously the drum is doing not only chip shops in can uh, we're, we're doing london can which is going to be here we've got a beach here and we're doing uh can drum arms and can too but the other big deal uh, they're going to be bringing over the world famous drum drummers from New York, uh, all the way from Harlem. We're going to have the Marching Cobras giving us an audio brand identity in can. But we love bringing these kids over, don't we? Because yeah. they they come from a bit, a lot of them come from a bit of a disadvantaged background. And what the Marching Cobras do is they take kids from that community and through music they give them self-esteem, train them, but discipline. 
And so we're bringing five of them over to Can to play for us. Indeed, and they're bloody damn good as well. They're bloody damn good. They're great. Uh, and I thought we would maybe leave the show with maybe some uh, some of the tunes and some of the scenes from last, well, well two years ago, two years ago, whenever it was, from Clan when the, the Harlem Drummers were last there. But before we say that, can I say, Hitton, thanks so much for, for all your input. Lynn, always a pleasure. <laughs> I'm sure you haven't completely lost your memory. You did memory some dates so well done. <laughs> we, we can work on that. Can I have a badge later? <laughs> you can. Good, good. Anyway, thanks everybody there for watching.